The Susan Brenda Show is a radio show online broadcasted on YouTube across the United States and globally. The show features guests who speak about health, spirituality, entertainment, and a host of subjects to enlighten people across the nation. Listen to the show that empowers women and men alike and highlights those who have made a difference. I'm Susan Brenda, and this is The Susan Brenda Show. Today, my guest is Tremaine Thomas a guest whom we had on the show before who was a really amazing psychologist. And he got his education, which is a master's in science and mental health counseling in 2006. Now, he also, his areas, if you will, of focus have been trauma, sexual abuse, uh, domestic violence, behavioral issues, mood disorders, and so many more things. So I want to welcome to the Susan Brenda Show, Tremaine Thomas, and welcome to my show, Tremaine. Thank you, Susan. Thank you for having me. Great to be back. Oh, that's so great having you. You know something? You know, many times I've asked you questions that are very important, but today I'm going to ask you this. Have you have you had a big event coming up and don't know if it still happens? How can I better sit with this uncertainty? All right. Well, when, when dealing with events or life situations, things that uh, you don't know what's going to happen, People's mind tends to ruminate and um, get ahead of themselves. But I, what I try to do is try to get them to think of what it, what if it will happen. Instead of thinking about the negative that could occur, I have them try to reverse it and think about the positive. What if it does happen? Because there's no, no certainties in life. So we know that things may not happen. But what I try to get them to do is look at the possibilities of, of things working out for them, and then work through that, and then begin to project onto their minds, if this was to happen, how would I perform? If it doesn't, how can I recoup? What can happen the next time? How can I create another event? How can I do certain things? So it's more looking at the solving the problem than to project more problems to occur, because, uh, there, like I said, there, there's always uncertainty with anything. Even if there were something that was scheduled to occur, there could be a mm -hmm. car accident. There could be things that can always hinder that. But if we're looking at the positive perspective, the positive outlook, then your mind will come up with more solutions. But when we start to focus on the negative or what could happen wrong, then the, your mind tends to tunnel vision that way and just focus on all the other stuff that could go wrong. So what I try to do is help them navigate through their mind the positive outlook, the positive perspective, and if it does happen, I'm, all, I'm prepared for it. If it doesn't, I know how to recoup and, and go the opposite way and to create something else that, that I can make sure can happen. Yeah, you know something? We live in a time that is so chaotic and so difficult, and that's a question that I have for you too, which is how do I navigate anxiety over my career right now? Because let me tell you something. A lot of people are dealing with this anxiety, and it has to do with the fact that they can't go back to work and they can't make a living. So I want to know, and the question is the same thing. How do I navigate the anxiety over my career? Okay, um, good question, and I, I, I know a lot of people who are dealing with that, you know, I've had to route it with that myself just based on what I do because a lot of my stuff was focused on people coming into the office and, you know, uh, uh, and different things like that, but then when people are scared to come in, it's harder for me to reach them. But what happens is um, we can look at poss possible solutions that will possibly allow us to work from home. So what I talk to people now about is, why not, you know, in your career path, try to look at something, and it's kind of what I was alluding to in the other question was focus on what are the possible solutions to where I can work from home? What are, what are things that I can do within my job? Uh, what if I reach out to HR and find another, another possible track or another uh, create a niche for myself that would allow me to work from home and allow me to do things. Can I start my own business at this juncture? Is there a possibility that I can get into something that I can create myself? Let me look at what the needs are, assess, like do a needs assessment, you know, and then find out what I, what I can do and how I can do that from a standpoint of uh, reducing my overhead. Because if I can work from home, then I don't have to pay for an office or do things of that nature. So finding things that I can do, uh, that are maybe virtual, that I can work from home and, and, and be able to make a living and be able to create a, a stream of income for myself where 
I can continue to sustain myself and my family and my household. So um, there's a lot of concern and a, and a lot of worry over people's career. But what I try to do is try to get them to maybe reinvent themselves at this point in their lives and figure out, you know, let me look at creative ways that I can make money and, you know, and, and, and revenue, generate revenue so that I am able to take care of my needs. You know, you have to think about this, Jermaine, because it's not in everybody's control that they have to work from home. Sometimes uh, the government is steps in and says, you have to work from home. You have no choice. And be- becoming an entrepreneur during this chaotic time, is that possible? Well, I found some people who have found ways to do certain stuff. Like I have neighbors and stuff who started, you know, making masks, you know, making, you know, so looking at the social climate, I have people who are making these shirts for these these movements that are going on, you know, printing T-shirts and printing stuff on masks and things of that nature. So, yes, if you have the, you know, intestinal fortitude to look at different things. I just think it's, that's where the creativity can come in at, you know. I understand, you know, in stressful times, people, you know, may not be able to do a certain things and, or, you know, they have certain things that they, that they, they have to take their, and, and not always in their control. But I think they can always network and look at other things. You know, there's stuff on social media that you can connect with other groups and figure out how other people, how you can band together to start something with somebody else. So it's not always about necessarily you having to have your name on something, but you can reach out to other people and find out what they're doing. And maybe as a group, you can do stuff together. It still gives you some leverage. It gives you a, a little bit more autonomy. You know, know it, it makes you know things can be a little bit more flexible um, and it can it can help try to offset some of the anxiety and apprehension by knowing that you can kind of put yourself in control of certain things why uh, as opposed to what a lot of people are experiencing having things dictated to them and saying hey you have to do this or do that or force being laid off and things of that nature so I just think you know you try to do the best you can at, at putting yourself in control of certain things so that it can offset or mitigate some things later on. Yeah, but um, preventing distancing is something that you're not in control of because the government says you have to do it. Um, Your mayors, your governors, they're all dictating to you. But the point is, is this the fact because we can't do things on our own and we can't uh, be in control, does this lead to depression? Uh, Yes. Um, I I was doing some research. It was like a third of Americans are showing signs of clinical anxiety and depression from the COVID situation, a third of America, you know. So that, I mean, that's a lot of people. And so they're showing that the, you know, the rate of depression has drastically increased since, since COVID hit. But while we are, you know, while we are being mandated to social distance from each, from each other, that doesn't mean that we have to disconnect. Social distancing and disconnecting are two different things. Um, and with technology today, it allows us to be in a position to, to stay connected with each other. So reaching out, like maybe on Zoom platforms or uh, hanging out in different uh, hangouts with a group of friends uh, virtually can still help us stay connected because, you know, the distancing happens, you know, physically, but emotionally that's where a lot of people find their find their comfort zone, you know, yeah. because when friends hang out, they feed off each other. So, yes, physically we might not be able to be in the same place, but if we can get on some platform where we can still connect with each other, to me it still serves a purpose because I'm seeing you, I'm being able to talk to you, I'm being able to share things with you. So even though there's a physical distance, there should not be a an emotional, you know, disconnect. You know, technology right. allows us to do that. Also, you know, we can bike ride. We can do stuff to – get outside, keep ourselves healthy, I would suggest people keep a schedule because with these times, days are running into other days. So there, you know, there's, you know, one day seems like the same, you know, the next day. So having a set schedule can can make things better. Making a list of activities that they would like to do and just being able to try to work through those things, starting an online activity such as a book club and things like that, looking at things like that that they can join to be a part of a community. Because if you're a part of community, you still feel like you matter. You still feel like you're a part of something. So I would say just because we're mandated to physically distance, the bet, you know, we, can't, we don't have to emotionally 
or, or disconnect emotionally, we can still stay emotionally connected with somebody. Yeah. You know, this is a time where there is this like civil war going on. I call it a civil war because there are people who believe that the virus is really terrible and others who say that, well, you know, it may it may exist, but I want to be able to go out. I I don't want to necessarily wear a mask. This is a big issue. And as a result of this, people are not taking this seriously. So what do you say to that? Uh, for the people who are not, not taking it seriously or, or, you know, if family and friends, you know, you, you have to just model what you feel is appropriate for you. Uh, one thing I learned is that there you, you have a sphere of influence. You can be influential, you know, and I just think in modeling what you feel is appropriate, you can do that in order to help someone else live, you know, uh, function better, you know. Uh, yes, I've had them in my office say the same thing. I believe that this is a hoax. I believe these things are, you know, numbers are inflated. And they very well can be inflated. They very well can, you know, you know misconstrue things. But I've had that same client uh, reach back out to me a month later and said I was in the hospital with pneumonia and COVID. The same person mm. who was saying that they didn't believe in it, now, you know, it had to suffer the consequences of being hospitalized behind it and uh, passing it on to some other people. Um so I just think that, you know, you have to do what you need to do for yourself. So when people are not taking it as seriously, I think you, you know, you take a stance somewhere and say, hey, you know, if you're not going to, you know, pr- at least protect me, you know, I'm going to protect myself, protect me. And you just try to model the best way you can so that you can be more influential to others. Because there's one thing I've learned, you know, you can't control other people's actions, but you can control what you can do and you can keep yourself protected when you go out out to certain places you can kind of model what you will want them to do for you uh if you were in the similar situation what you will want them to do if you were the person that was didn't believe in things you know so i think you have to model it and just make sure you're sticking to your your principles about it and uh, continue to adhere to whatever uh need to be in order for you to be safe and keep your family safe yeah i hear you you know a lot of people as we were talking a moment ago um, take this very seriously to the point where it's almost ridiculous. Uh, I'm using that word ridiculous because it's like wipe everything down when you go to the supermarket, um, you know, take a cart, wipe it down, um, do not, you know, distance yourself is very important. Um, you name it, they're they're doing that. And I just want to know when somebody says to the other person, um, you know something? There is, yes, but we don't need to do everything. And it's a point where, you know, it's gotten to the point where it's just beyond belief. So if you're in that situation and you have to, you know, kind of it's a friend or a relative, what do you say to them? Well, uh, again, you're going to find people, you know, just like you said before, you know, um, we're a country, you know, that is seems to be always polarized with, with certain things, with certain, with certain mindsets, with certain, you know, concepts. So you're going to have the have and the have not. You're going to have the people who believe and the people that don't believe or, or the people who think that they're taking it to an extreme. And the thing I would say to some of them is that would you rather be on the other side of this where we can say that, oh, yeah, it was too much, but we all, we all can go out now without masks. Or you'd rather stay where we're at, where we're a lot of people are feeling like they're hostages within their own homes or within their own communities or they feel, you know. So my approach would be, hey, would you rather let's look at this stuff and get it done? Because like a, lo- a lot of other countries, uh, I'm fortunate enough to know people in different countries and they're telling me their experiences over in France and over in other areas where things are going back to work as normal, business as normal, schools are open, businesses are open at full force. And they were saying that the reason is because they kind of jumped on it and the whole system did the same thing. People were, you know, penalized. People were given uh, tickets and stuff if they didn't come out, if they came outside without a mask. So for the people that feel like they're, that they're doing too much or it's too extreme, you know, I would try to you know, employ them like, will we want, do we want to be where other countries are, opening back up as a country and being able to go about as regular, you know, a business as usual, or do we want to stay 
you know, with these numbers fluctuating, going down and fluctuating, you know, opening and closing. So I would try to appeal to them that if, you know, we want to really get on the other side of this, we might need to just take it serious for right now so we won't have to be doing this stuff for the next three, four, five, six months. You know, in Sweden, they never closed down. They kept on opening, and they believed that even though the virus existed, that it was unnecessary to um, close businesses, to do everything that we're doing today, okay? So what do you think that a country like ours, which is much bigger, I understand that, um, close everything and cause anxiety and cause depression of people. Isn't it their responsibility to open up and to make people feel confident that they, um, they're going to be all right? As a, you're saying as a governing agency here? Correct. Yeah, it, it would be. But I think, again, what we're, we're talking about um, polarization and we're talking about different people who are having certain the power to do certain things. And so, I think if we can get on one accord with certain things, yes, that will be fine if we all believe and and done things systematically. But what is happening, what I think has happened here in the States is just because uh, political affiliations and different things like that, this stuff has caused, you know, great division and, and people are undecisive about what is happening. I think because based on the information that we have received, even from like the CDC and from all these different people, it was expressed one thing and then it seemed like it, the, 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 it seemed like the narrative changes every time they put out, you know, these, these, this information. So now we don't have a, a really blueprint of how we want to attack this. I think a lot of these other countries just determined this is how we're going to do. I think if we would have had that in the beginning, this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to all attack it, I think, yes, I think we'd have, if our government, yes, should have been in that place to do that. Because of certain liberties, I don't think that happened. And so, well, I know it didn't happen. And so now we're, you know, at a stage that where some people are doing one thing and another people are doing another thing and they're trying to figure out which part is working as opposed to if we'd have just had a, uh, this is where we're going to come from the top down saying this is how we're going to approach this thing and we're just going to attack it this way and everybody follows suit. I think, yeah, I think we'd have been a, in a much different situation. It's just that, you know, things got pushed back. There was a lot of pushback. And I think in these countries, even though they can do that, I think they believe in that government to a certain extent to allow them to make the decisions and then, you know, follow through with it. So I just think, you know, we're, we were not at that point. We were not the same way. And so it caused us to have a lot of these peaks and valleys when it comes to this virus. Right. Well, I always like to give my, my guests the last word. Is there something you'd like to tell our audience that's going to be very important for them to understand? It's very important that we learn that we must know that we need to take care of ourselves, especially in times like this when there's a worldwide panic and stuff like that. One of the ways to take care of ourselves, I understand that the news is important, but a lot of stuff we shouldn't be listening to or following through because a lot of it plants a lot of fear. And when, when there's fear planted, a lot of times the anxiety and depression is exacerbated. So staying away from certain, you know, watching the news all the time just to, just to hear kind of what's happening because, again, like information uh, fluctuates. So, yes, I understand a need to know things and be knowledgeable to the point where if we're sitting in front of the TV because we can't go out or feel like we can't go out, we now subscribe to the TV and things of that nature. Having too much of that stuff actually works in a negative capacity because now all you filled yourself with was fear uh, of death or fear of something's not going to happen or fear of losing jobs, all this fear that gets pushed in, and it, it tends to manifest at some point. So I think understanding that in order for us to be able to help our neighbor, we must be in a position to help ourselves. So staying emotionally healthy in these times, bike riding, getting outside, uh, the sun is a, a regulator of mood. So having the sun there is a natural thing. We're getting vitamin D. Uh, being able to do certain things uh, in our community, uh, helping neighbors, doing stuff like that, it keeps us connected, but it also keeps us in a place of not letting what's happened change us to become so fearful that we don't see any hope, you know. So I think in these times, hope is one of the things that we must latch on to and understand that we as a nation have been through a lot of things and that we can come out on the other side. But the only way we can be good for somebody else is that if we're taking care of ourselves. So I implore our audience 
to take care of ourselves, do the things that we need to do, take the vitamins, take things that will build your immune system, you know, do the practical stuff, but also do the emotional stuff, do the psychological stuff, do the mental stuff, do the things that's going to keep you in an emotional healthy state so that if someone does need you, you're able to assist as opposed to you're, you're being a weight to them because now you're in the same boat as them and not being able to help them. So if we can work on help, uh, making sure that we're in an emotional safe place, an emotional healthy place by reading things that are going to uplift us, uh, watching things that are going to lift us, involving ourselves in things that's going to lift us, uh, doing things that's going to promote healthiness, I think what that does, it helps us to be able to give to others that energy. Uh, and it also it helps them come to a time, and now they can reach out and grab somebody and help somebody else, and we can right. keep this thing going, and we'll be in a better state as a people because we're good, you know, individually. Jermaine Thomas has been our guest, and if people want to get in touch with you, Jermaine, how do they do that? They can they can reach me at um, 561-484-3990. Um, that's uh, my office number. They can reach me at Safe Harbor Solutions, safeharbor.solutions at comcast.net or safeharborsolutions.com. Well, today my guest has been Jermaine Thomas, who's an amazing man, a psychologist who has a lot of hope for people during this pandemic and during this crisis. I want to thank you for being on the Susan Brenda Show. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me once again. It's always a pleasure talking to you, Susan.